Hello, greetings. Hello, how are you today? I'm Blaggy with a spear, and yes, I am indeed a Viking. Oh, yes, you can see the mail that I wear, and the cloak, and the woody hat. I'm being a Viking, and I've even got a Thor's hammer hidden away just in case some Anglo Saxon walks past as a on my travels. Now today's video is the shortest video about this cloak and it's a slight tip of what to do when your cloak is, you know, it's a bit loose and getting everywhere and you can't control your cloak. So what you're going to learn from this video is a short little tip about cloaks and they're going to talk about cloaks first of all and why they're very important during the Viking Age. Uh, you're going to be entertained but I may even be funny. Enjoy this video! So. Oh yes, don't forget to go and smash the like button before we carry on. Yes, go and smack it now. Go and get your old axe out. You know, hypothetical axe and smash. You know, boop or bash the old like button. And you always got to look down when you put your axe away because you've got to find your axe ring. Yes, so you can see as I walk back, as I come forward again, I'm a Viking, I'm wearing nice red wool trousers. I've got a good sword, an axe, a say axe, and I'm wearing a cloak. But as you can see from the cloak, it, down, it you know, drags on the floor and it gets a bit everywhere, it's big. So what do you do? How do you manage your cloak? So the first thing I've got to do is put my spear down. So let me just drop it on my foot and drop it on the ground. So what you could do, the first thing really, and the only thing you can do in this situation is to get a boat. So luckily for me, I've got a boat on the floor and I have a Viking boat made from leather. Got a bit of a handmade strap end, as we call these. It looks like to be bronze or brass, probably brass. And this is a very old boat. I've had this like 20 years. And it's got a, a nice little buckle with a little plate. Or is essential and proper rivets. I don't like it when you see kit and they got pop rivets. Get rid of them. Get some proper rivets. Now, one thing about boats which I do like is a wider boat. If this boat was twice as wide, it would feel twice as comfortable on your body. Trust me. So that's my little tip on boats. So you always get a wider boat. And they last longer. So there you are. You're a Viking back in the 9th century and you're on your travels, but your cloak's getting in the way. You know, you're getting a bit fed up of it. It's dragging on the floor, the wind's blowing, and it's, you know, it's old Irix who, who, who's marching behind, is getting cloak in his face from the wind and he's getting fed up of it and he keeps stamping and walking on it because these things, as, you, as I walk away, you'll see, they do drag on the floor. See? So, and especially if you're quite short in height and your cloak is longer than yourself. So you get your boat and you put your hands around your back and you feed your boat through, making sure that your boat is not twisted because what you do not want is a twisted boat because somebody will spot it. So I always run my hand along the back and it is twisted, but now I've untwisted it. And I always keep my hand on this section just before the buckle so that I can then grab this bit of boat with this finger because putting a boat on on your own is not easy and they will fall down and you want to do it two or three times if you're not used to it so I put I get my little finger out or my middle finger and I just hold the boat and I feed through until it gets tight and then I can tighten up my boat and then of course you always feed the strap end through the belt there like this until you've got a little loop and then you feed your strap in through the loop. You've got to look down again, make sure it's not twisted like it is there and then tighten it up. That will guarantee the belt will not fall down and make sure it's tight enough in your body. I could probably do that another notch tighter to be fair but then what happens you kind of lift your cloak up a little bit and you've tied your cloak back. Although yes, that's my sword sticking out the back there. So that's always gonna happen unless I make sure my sword is facing down more, but it will naturally want to travel back like this. So that's 
what that has done is lifted my cloak up it stopped it from dragging on the floor I've still got plenty of room to move around let me pick up my spear and I'll demonstrate as I use the spear it's not limiting my action it's keeping me warm it's hiding my shiny mail so some guy with a, with a spear may come against me not thinking I'm armoured and then realise oh, oh, by, by, by the gods he's got mail and I've already got a spear so, so you can see it does quite well now I'm going to walk back over there and walk forward again so you can see exactly how it's not dragging on the floor and how it's lifted it as you can see Better improvement. Oh yes, coming back. Indeed. So I'm sure you agree. That is nice. Another thing about a cloak is always have your pin facing down is the best method. And generally have it on your shoulder. They always do fall down and, and in, in time they'll travel just down as you wear it. And of course this is also a weapon. So make sure they're not too pointy. And don't have this section of your pin too long but I could afford to chop that back by probably an inch 20 mil not have it so pointy but I don't want to ruin it as I didn't make it myself and that's the way I brought it another thing about a cloak it keeps you warm so especially if you're during the back end of the season in let's say it's September October or it's beginning of the year let's say it's February and you're going to your festival where the cloak will keep you warm and it's essential to keep warm and of course this cloak is very rich because it's lined with purple which is a kind of a king's colour so very expensive dye to make and get and it's got a lovely lovely cloth i'm sure you agree the wool on the outside is just splendid and if i'm lucky i might be able to get a bit of a hood over it let's try it hang on yeah so another thing i can do with my cloak now i can make a hood so if it's very windy I can, I, can, I can tighten it up and have it, you know, keep my head warm. If you're wearing a helmet, it's probably impractical. You probably have your helmet slung on your belt if you're lucky. If you're lucky to own a helmet. So let me get my old spear up. See, what I did there, I'll show you. I'll just demonstrate as I walk past. I often used to do this. So I'll just drop the spear on my foot and then I can get it back again without bending down. And then if, you, if you've got to drop your spear in the battle, if you're using the shield and you don't want to use your spear, you could drop it and then get your sword out, take the man out and very quickly get your spear back up. But that's kind of a rare situation because most of the time you'll have to move forward or backwards and, and you disconnect from your spear. I've not seen too many people wear it. Let me just adjust my hood again. So a hood is a, a, a sign of wealth as well to a certain degree because that's a lot of material as well to wear and I do love a good hood. I think it looks better on camera, I'm sure you agree, wearing a, you know, a cloak, not a hood. You know? But hoods are just as nice as well. But you know, I think it's great when you can make a hood out of a cloak and I've done that many a time on battle on the camp when it's railing or too windy and you, you're waiting for the battle to commence. Hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you got some benefit out of that little tip and of course by wearing a belt around your, your cloak it kind of makes it into a jacket in a sense and of course you could shove some it around there like a loaf of bread and it will stay there on your back for a while if you're lucky because these are light sleeves now oh yes i love a hood i'm sure you agree please do two things for me is to share the video if you like cloaks if you like vikings and give us a good share with your friends facebook and twitter and you know places like that and number two like and smash the old like button oh yes thank you for watching and thank you for subscribing to the channel it's goodbye from braggy as we wait for the end screen to go i've got a very muddy spear